Natasha Denona has a new makeup, a new launch. I did not anticipate this launch. Did did not anticipate this launch at all. I didn't think that she would be coming out with something like this. But then again, I was like, well, she didn't really do anything like huge for Valentine's Day. So like, okay, this this does make sense now that I'm thinking about it. Hey everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. As you guys can tell, I mean, we are talking about the new Natasha Denona Hyper Natural Palette. This is a new release from Natasha Denona. Literally, it was released not even a week ago. And we have a full face palette to get through today. So, before we get into this video, if you guys are new here, my name is Stacey. I feature unfiltered makeup opinions and honest reviews. Definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the like button as well. Pushes my videos right through the algorithm so people can see more of me. And okay, let's talk about the new Natasha Denona Hyper Natural Palette. Okay, let's, let's get you all the information that you need to know price what this eyeshadow palette is all about and then we're going to get into like the face I do have my foundation on and my concealer and my powder but because this comes with bronzer blush eyeshadow possibly a highlight I wanted to leave the canvas like pretty blank today so the hyper natural face palette it combines the no makeup makeup concept with Natasha's renowned expertise creating an everyday eye and cheek essential. Infused with hydrating skin-loving ingredients, its talc-free hybrid face palette showcases five eyeshadows perfect for finger application, an ultra-soft blush duo, and a multifunctional bronze and contour trio. This entire face palette retails for $62 on the Natasha Denona website. Now, I do have an affiliate code with Natasha Denona. It'll save you 15% off your purchase when you use my code. It's XOXOSTACY15. So that is affiliated. But I, if you guys want to save some money and you want to shop on Natasha Denona and also help out my channel, I can. it's 15% off. This is also available on Sephora and Ulta Beauty. Natasha created this eyeshadow palette to be like for the no makeup makeup look. Honestly, when I heard about this palette at first, I wasn't super intrigued by it. I was like, this is just like a natural looking palette. And then I started thinking about like, this is actually one of those palettes that really speaks to me as a mom because it has a lot of those one and done shades in there. And that's what she created this for. And it's also just an all inclusive in one eye face palette. Whereas a lot of her face and eye palettes in the past, like I have the Natasha Denona Love Palette, Love Face Palette. I'm gonna open it up here. Mine's a little bit broken, but I mean, this is a, it is a face palette and an eye palette all in one, but it actually came with blush, highlight, and then five eyeshadows. And while this is a little bit more versatile, I mean, you do have most of like your face things in here. The blush really isn't usable in this one. I know she has some other eye face palettes that are really, really good as well. But this one is literally your full face of makeup besides your foundation and your setting powder all in one palette because you can actually use, at least I'm hoping, you can use this shade right here as like a highlight if you do like highlight. And you can contour and bronze your face as well. Her claims are that you're supposed to be able to use this on any skin tone. You know, I, I mean, the only thing that I can attest to is if it works on somebody who is super pasty pale. I can't attest to it working on somebody who is very like deep skin toned or somebody who is all of these skin toned. Now to give you guys a little bit of information about my skin, about my undertones, I have a cool, fair undertone. Very, very fair. That means that I have pink undertones in my face and I tend to lean more cool toned and cool tones look better on my face than warm tones. So the fact that this actually comes with these more neutral looking blush shades, they don't really lean cool or warm. And then you also have like this bronzer trio in here. It it should lean more neutral instead of like more of a warm undertone or more of a cool undertone. So I'm hoping that that's what her whole design was with this. So let's actually swatch the palette live for you so you guys can see. And I'll give you guys my thoughts, but we're going to go into the bronze and contour shades first. They're very like silky smooth. And I'm just going to put them on the back of my hand 
So that's the lightest shade, the medium shade, and then the dark shade. So the lightest shade for me, honestly, this wouldn't really contour anything. It might warm up my face a little bit or it might be a really good like nose contour, but that's like really, really light, even for me. The medium shade is a little bit warm leaning and then this is obviously like a contouring shade. Now these are all matte, so you could actually use them as an eyeshadow, like a transition in the crease or anything like that, but they swatch really pretty. So like quality wise, it's a Natasha Denona formula. Now sticking my finger in these, like there aren't brushes that are small enough, like small, like my fingers, which is really interesting that she designed the palette like this because like I don't have a brush that's going to be able to fit into these three individual shades. So just pointing that out. Now we have the blush. I'm going to do the baby pink side and then also like the rosy pink side. That baby pink side is like super light. And then we'll do the, see like I wouldn't wear the baby pink. I would just wear the darker pink shade or you could layer them possibly. Like that would be really pretty, especially if you find that one is too pigmented. The darker one, if you find that one's too pigmented, that would be really good. But like that light one is really, really light. Like even on somebody who is darker toned, like obviously that's not going to show up. So this is not a universal shade. Now let's look at the eyeshadows. We have five of them. They're all shimmer shades. They're supposed to be this like new formulation. You're supposed to apply them only with your fingers or you can apply them with a brush, but she said that they best apply with like your fingers and it's supposed to be like almost a wet like like consistency. It's really soft though. And that's very pretty. So this one's called Every Day. Every Day. It swatches really nice, especially on the hand. This one is so pretty. It's called Dreamy. And this one actually reminds me a lot of one in I Need a Nude. Um, and it almost reminds me of the one in the Love Face palette right there. This is the one I'm thinking you could probably use as a highlight. That's my guess. Um, you would just have to either go in with like your finger and pat it on your face or maybe very lightly with a brush. Now we have the darkest shade in the palette. This is called Statement. This is like a very, it's not really warm, not really cool toned, whereas that first one was more like a bronzy shade. I want my sleeve here so you guys can see. So there's the two browns. And then we have Soft. This is actually almost like a, is this rose gold? It looks rose gold. No, this is definitely a pink shade like super, super pink. And then we have Casual, which is the last shade. This is actually swatching gray. Like it looks gray on my finger, like a gray brown. So what beautiful swatches we have here. Now you guys can see kind of how it swatched live. Now I actually wanna just use the, I'm not doing the eyes yet, I'm gonna use the face, the face stuff. Like I said, I don't really have like a, a brush that's going to fit into the bronzer. Like I'm looking here and I'm looking. Like I do have my putty bronzer brush from e.l.f. Like this thing is teeny tiny. And this is literally probably the only brush that's going to fit into this shade. And we're just going to slowly like buff this into the skin. So that's the lightest shade on Super Pasty Paleness of me. This just doesn't, like it's showing up a little bit and it's giving me a little bit of warmth, but I wouldn't say that this is like a, a contour at all. So let's just go about the face real quick with the lightest shade and see kind of how it shows up. It's going on like really silky smooth though. I just don't like how like tiny this is. Honestly, I'm the type of person that would like swirl my brush like in the whole thing if I was in a hurry and I wouldn't really concentrate on like one or the other. That's why I'm super surprised that she didn't even do like different versions of this where maybe it was split in two instead of in three because that would have been easier to do because these are just gonna muddy over time, especially if you're the type of person who swirls your brush in like me. I mean, it's pretty and it's going on really nicely. Like this is just blending into my skin like a dream. Or is it because you can't see it that it looks like it's blending in like a dream? So I'm going to use the medium shade. This one was more like warm toned, but okay, that's like showing up way better. This is blending in really well. It's super, super easy to blend in. So that's really pretty. Like you see half my face is bronzed. 
I don't even know if I would need, like, the last shade is, a, like, would I use that shade? I really don't know. See, and now I'm just, like, mixing the two together, the light and the medium. And that honestly seems to me more like my shade. But the whole purpose of this is so that you, you don't do that. So, yeah. Really just, like, blending into my skin really nicely, though. And then I am going to take a little bit of, like, the light shade mixed with the medium shade, like that. And then I'm going to contour my nose. Because I guess that's what this is intended for, right? Which it does, that does do a good job, like, contouring. This is just... I feel like the light shade is a little bit too light. I mean, it gives it a little bit of a contour for me, but I'm, I'm pasty pale. Can you imagine that being used on somebody who's not pasty pale, who's darker than me? Like, that's not going to work. It's really pretty how it blended in, though. It's not, like, over-accentuating anything. It's really pretty. It just seems a little bit unconventional. And just to give you guys a reference for the brush that I use, this is typically the brush that I use. Like, there's no way I could use the bronzer shade with my typical bronzing brush so keep that in mind like there there's absolutely no way now for the blush brush i do have this one from sigma i do use this one quite a bit it's the e60 it came in like one of their holiday releases but i believe they sell this anyway so we're using the darker blush first because i'm thinking like if this blush is just too bright too poppy pink you can actually layer the more muted tone underneath and I feel like that would definitely give it a better like look so if you don't like how bright your cheek is looking you can just use a little bit of the shape here and just pop it over top and it'll really diffuse it out it is blending really nicely and that did layer really nicely though that's really pretty so you know I feel like this this lighter blush shade it's just like, is it going to work on every skin tone? Again, I don't think so, even though, like, her whole intention with this palette was so that it's, like, one and done. It, it's supposed to work with everybody's shade. I think this brighter, poppier pink shade would look really nicely on anybody. I shouldn't say anybody, but, like, if you're in theory, it could work on a lot of skin tones, a lot of ranges, because it isn't really pulling, like, super peachy or even, like, super blue. It feels like it's kind of a neutral like vibe to it and then again that pink shade is just super super bright this this pink shade right here it's just so like skin looking that using it as a blush on its own i don't think it's going to work but i think you could use it as laying down a color like when you're using the mattes for like an eyeshadow look but i don't feel like this is something that you could use for like you know, just a regular normal blush without the other color on top of it. Like it's just, I don't, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Okay. So I do want to try this shade. It's called dreamy as like my highlight and it said best applied with your finger. So I am going to just like slightly coat my finger and then we're going to tap this onto the cheek. Because, like, in theory, if this is supposed to be, like, all you need, I'm going to use, you know, everything in this palette to create my makeup look. That's actually really pretty. I'm just noticing it's very, like, glittery. So, like, if you are not the type of person who likes using, like, glitter as a highlight and you like it more smooth, this is definitely not going to work. So, you would have to have a highlight. It's really pretty. Don't get me wrong. But I do feel like I have, like, glitter on my face and it's, like, texturizing quite a bit. So like it's not very like smooth for the face, but it, I mean, it's meant for the eye anyway. But like I said, in theory, if I'm going to be taking this eyeshadow palette and this is the only thing that I need, eyeshadow, blusher, bronzer, highlighter, that's what I would use. Okay, so let's do something with the eyes. This is made to be like a one and done type of palette. And I'm honestly thinking, grabbing my brushes here. I'm honestly thinking like one and done or two and done type of palette, like popping something in the crease and then throwing on one of these shades. And you can do so many different shade looks with this because you have like a neutral brown. You have this really beautiful shade here. You have this, like these are really pretty because you can create sultry looks with them. But if you're looking for something more everyday looking, I would honestly just use the lightest shade here, pop this in the crease, and if you are the type of person who 
you know, you only want one palette who, like, here we go. So just popping this in the crease and it is looking really nice. It's just very subtle and it's building up well, like on the eye. Like that's really pretty. And then obviously you're supposed to use your finger. So honestly, I'm just going to use Dreamy. We're going to put this on the inner portion of my lid. Okay, so if you did want to step up the, the game a little bit, you don't, like, if you're, let's say I'm I'm going out for the evening and I have this basic look on, you could just pop in one of these, like, darker shades. If you wanted something a little bit more sultry, I'd say one of these. If you want something that's a little bit more, like, not so super sultry, but a little bit more, like, warm and romantic, this last shade here would be really pretty. I'm going to use Casual, which is a like gray undertone and I'm just gonna pop this on my finger and put it on the outer corner because she says that like they're best applied with your finger and now we've just taken my eyeshadow look from like a day look to a night look very easily and it's literally just a couple of shades out of the same palette the only thing that I'm really not liking is that like when I use a brush I can have more precision here and like that's just not possible with this so it's getting a little bit muddy here and it's a little bit hard to like get it into like it's hard to get it into the folds of like my eye like i'm gonna take that brush that i used for my crease we're just using that light bronzer shade and then we're just gonna like blend this like it's settling funny right here and i think it's because it's been applied with my finger whereas like if i have a brush like it just really blends it in better so I'm just gonna blend right here real quick. Like it's been applied, it feels like powder. I think I'm good to go. And then just a little bit more of the shade right here. Put it on the inner corner. Just make it come to life a little bit more. One thing I am noticing about this shade is that it is like, it's not as shiny as what I thought it was going to be, which is good because I didn't want all shiny shades in an eyeshadow palette and this one's a little bit more of a sheen so it's a little bit sparkly but it's not anything like big where some of these other ones are like they look like a, a foil shade and this one doesn't it's really nice i actually like the way that this looks so i'm going to take just that angled brush try to clean this up that's the only thing i don't like is that when you apply it with your eyes and it's supposed to apply better with your eyes it's just it feels like it muddies right there really bad here's the completed makeup look with the new hypernatural face palette from natasha denona here we have it the hypernatural palette i did want to pull out just for reference so that you guys could see like how it stacks up against like one of her normal face palettes that she's come out with in the past like i said i have the love face palette here and so you guys can see like the Hyper Natural palette is actually a little bit smaller than her normal size palettes. It, that's what I'm like, that's exactly what I'm seeing. And actually the packaging is a little bit more like sturdy compared to the Love Face palette. You can still also remove like everything in the back here. Honestly, I like this packaging better than the Love Face palette. I think it works a lot better and it reminds me more of like I Need a Nude and the, the Zendo and the uh, like all the other. Natasha Denona palettes that are like a sturdier packaging. This one is just like super flimsy to me. I don't know if her other face palettes are like that, but like leave me a comment down below if you have one of her other face palettes and it's a little bit flimsy, like this one where it's a little, like it just, it's a little bit more flimsy, I feel like. And then obviously my little flap broke here. Obviously, I Need a Nude was one of her most recent releases in 2023. And then obviously we have the Hyper Natural Face Palette. And probably a lot of you are wondering, oh, like, is that really similar to the I Need a Nude? I feel like this is like a dumbed down version of I Need a Nude. Like, it's very hard to like hold these up, guys. Um, I feel like this is a very, this could be a very dumbed down version of I Need a Nude. The packaging is really, really similar. Some of the shades in here are really, really similar. Like obviously the blushes are blush tones and this shade doesn't match anything in here, but some of the browns are very similar like this one and this one. Like these two shades, not so much, but like this one is very similar to some of the shades in here, at least like with the feel. So they're not quite the same, but they do look similar. Like their consistency is a little bit different, but it's kind of like a sister companion. So it does kind of look 
like it could be like maybe just a buy range out of like I need a nude or something because these are definitely like no cool tone or warm tone like they don't feel like specifically like warm or cool tone they feel a little bit more neutral to me this one is a little bit more bronzy but again like it looks really similar to some of the ones in I need a nude and I need a nude is more cool toned oh let's gather the thought bubble that's coming out of my brain right now after I mean we've only tried this once we're sitting down we're trying this once Upon first impression, I definitely have to say like the quality is really good. Like all of these like blended really, really well. I'm not having any problems with like the bronzer. Like it literally looks like it's just a part of my skin. It's really pretty. The blush is also really pretty and that is really smooth on my skin. And it's not like texturized or patchy anywhere like it looks really nice and smooth so I definitely would have to say like the formula is there I do like the poppy pink shade in here but I wish that instead of this like weird like lighter pink shade that she would have gone with like maybe a peach that would have been really pretty like a poppy pink and a peach because then when you layer them it's still really pretty I think that would have been a little bit better and then like you would have a little bit more of a peach if you want to use something matte with some of the shades down here, I can understand like maybe she was thinking like if you want a pink transition shade with this on the lid, you know, one and done type of look, that's kind of what it was being paired with. But this this shade just seems really unconventional. As for the bronzers, again, like I said, they blended like a dream. There's nothing wrong with the formula. The only problem that I see with this is like I wish you would have split it in two, maybe done like a, a contour shade. And a bronzing shade so something a little bit more neutral and something a little bit more warm for bronzing instead of doing the trio because I'm the type of person who I don't use a brush like this every day I actually use a bigger brush like you guys saw and like I having to use like a specific type of brush just for this palette it's kind of it's kind of inconvenient however like if this is the only palette that you have the only blush the only bronzer it may not be so inconvenient for you but I definitely think that like having three just was not a good choice. I think maybe if she's had two, that would have been a little bit better. And maybe even switched out one of these shades down here and made like one of the lighter brown shades, an actual eyeshadow shade that could be for contour in the crease of your eye or a contour, like if, if you're light enough to have it as a contour, like down there as well, because literally the shade size would have been pretty much the same and it didn't like contour horribly on my nose but I definitely think that the, the trio just wasn't a good idea these shades are really beautiful they swatch really nicely I can't wait to play with a little bit of them like I can't wait to put them on my eyes more I think that being able to do really really easy looks and like just apply them with your finger especially if you don't have brushes it's a very smart move for Natasha Denona from like a marketing standpoint I do like these shades but I really feel like again they seem a little bit repetitive. Now that I've swatched this one, like from the pictures, I was like, oh, this one looks like this one looks like this one. And they're definitely different. This one is definitely more of a gray undertone, which I completely agree with having in the palette, but these two are still pretty similar. So I kind of feel like, again, maybe she could have done like a different shade with that. I am not upset with this palette at all. I have some critiques for this palette. I think that it is a little bit... I think the concept is absolutely genius because if you think of somebody who who is constantly on the go who's only able to do one and done shades or if you're going on a trip somewhere like where was this when I went to Las Vegas because this would have been awesome to have in Las Vegas because it was literally everything everything in this eyeshadow palette all I would have really needed to bring was concealer powder foundation and my setting spray and then this and I could have gotten away with like you know having my makeup just be pretty much this for my trip to Vegas. So I think that the concept is really, really genius and I'm not mad at it at all. I think it's a beautiful product. I just feel like there's some like little tweaks that I would have made to it. Natasha doesn't really explain why she did the three. I understand it's a bronze and contour, but like, am I gonna ever dip into that dark shade? Probably only on my eyes, probably only on my eyes. They blend out like a dream. They're absolutely stunning. I think it's a beautiful palette. 
It retails for $62. Again, you can save 15% off with my code. And that is only on the Natasha Denona website. And you can also buy this on Ulta and Sephora. I'm going to keep playing with this, give you guys more finalized thoughts and opinions in a speed reviews video so I can, you know, let you guys know exactly what I think about this. Right now, I think it's a beautiful palette, some unconventional pan sizes, but it's not bad quality. Like it's such good quality. Thanks guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing so you guys can see more from me. And I hope I get to see you in my next video. Bye.